Y'all know what time it is. It's time for the Kevin and Nikki Show on iHeartRadio. Yeah, 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 yeah. Overdose. It's time for the Kevin and Nikki Show. They gon' have it lit up. Yeah, you know, it's time for the Kevin and Nikki show. They got the airways popping every city across the globe. It's time for the Kevin and Nikki show. They gon' have it lit up. Yeah, you know, it's time for the Kevin and Nikki show. They got the airways popping every city across the globe. You know him as a throwback actor, Kevin D. Bitten. 360 twice, Jim, how you keep winning? And you know the baddest actress, Nikki Warren. She so bad you walking past, she had you speaking for her. If you ain't tuning in, this your reality check You might miss out on your favorite star celebrity guest When they celebrate, what you do, you get the bell, yeah Doing Kevin's Corner, get expired and encouraged, yeah Bend them corners, why you listen, but don't swerve Find out what's getting on, Nikki nerd What's bothering Nikki, what's bothering Nick, Nick What's bothering Nikki, what's bothering Nick, Nick Keep on playing, me and Kevin Goons and we gon' get you hit Yo, check us out on social media In your mobile phone, we everywhere You have the station played out like a ringtone Follow me, like Bino R-E-M-E-Y Bino Remy, pop like Sammy And my flow hotter Thick of semi, been doing this since I scraped up pennies. But back to the subject, Kevin Nicky. say to America is be true to what you said on paper. If I lived in China or even Russia or any totalitarian country, maybe I could understand some of these illegal injunctions. Maybe I could understand the denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges because they haven't committed themselves to that over there. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of press. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. So just as I say we aren't going to let any dogs or water hoses turn us around, we aren't going to let any injunction turn us around. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now. Because I've been to the mountaintop. Anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Yes. Yeah, that's powerful. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was powerful. That was very, very powerful, powerful, powerful speech. 
by Dr. Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. um, One of his many speeches. Yeah. My favorite one is the one he like, free at last, free at last. I love that one. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's real interesting uh, with that particular speech. That was one of the speech where he kind of knew he was going to die. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah, what he was talking yeah. about when he said, you yeah. know, I may not get there with you, but, mm-hmm. you know, my eye has seen, you know, uh, the, you know, the glory of the Lord. I, yes. my eye has seen the promised land. And, um, you know, so it's very, very, very touching and emotional speech. And I mean, I, I don't know, man. It's just, you know, when you look at what Dr. Martin Luther King stood for, he stood for peace. He stood for nonviolence. He stood for equal rights. He stood for that which represents Good, mm-hmm. but yet he was a, he was a man that was uh, so hated. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it really do it does uh, you know speak to the issue of race relations back then, yeah. and even to this very day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, yeah, you have yeah. to you have to ask the question: if someone's standing for that which is right, good, just, fair, mm-hmm. and and equal, yeah, and one is opposing that which is just fair good and equal what does that say about the post person that's opposing right and so right, right. you know uh while we have come uh a very very long way um you know we still got a lot of ground to cover we still got a long we have way a to go. long way yeah. to go and it it just yeah. it just seems like it i don't want to say um we're going backwards sometimes it do seem like we're going backwards but it it know? just seems like um, the direction that we go in depends upon the person that we're following. Right, right. And to get a better understanding of that, you know, now we have Trump in mm-hmm. office. Mm-hmm. And since Trump has been in office, here come all this stuff. Yeah. You know, all this racial stuff. You know, you know, now racism was always there. You know what? But yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's, it's heightened, it's it's heightened, heightened now. now. But it, it really, it, you know, when you think about it, you can actually trace it back a little bit further with the election of Barack Obama. Mm-hmm. So that, to me, that's when I started to see and kind of feel that, uh, one, like you said, race was, you know, the, the race problem has always been here. It's all, but, yeah. but it was more, it seemed like it became more outward, started to become more outward when Barack Obama got in office and then the residue of that is heightened now. Yeah. You know, with the election yeah. of Trump and things like that, man. And to me, I, you yeah, know, my, and, uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I, well, I, I got it. In my well, head. My, go ahead. my personal feeling is I, I'm, and I'm, and I'm saying this, I don't understand and maybe it's because of how my mother and father raised me. They they raised me, my brother, and my sister to love everybody, just to look at people as people mm-hmm, and things mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. So for me, growing up like that, we, we wasn't taught to hate anyone. We didn't have hate modeled by our mom and dad. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. No matter what your race, color, creed, you know, and to this very day, I have friends of all nationalities. Yeah. I have friends, I have Chinese friends, I have Indian friends, I have Caucasian friends, I have African American friends, I have mm-hmm. I have Hispanic friends, mm-hmm. Latino, I have mm-hmm. friends of all nationalities, uh, you know, went to uh, a diverse high school, diverse mm-hmm. college. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I really struggle with hating someone just because of the color of their skin. Right, when that right, person right, had right, nothing right. to do with why why they were born that way. And you know, and 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 I can have a better understanding of hate, well, I don't want to use the word hate, but if that's the term you want to use in the context of race mm-hmm, relations mm-hmm, mm-hmm, or disliking mm-hmm. somebody because you had a bad experience mm-hmm. with a particular race. Now, we need to always understand that just because of your specific bad experience, it doesn't mean that all of that race is bad. Mm-hmm. You just had a particular bad experience with that particular race. But I can understand somebody starting there in terms of having a foundation for not liking or hating or disliking a race. Right. Because now you have you have Trump in office and, and you know, everyone's saying that he's he's this, that, and the third. And now you got all these people coming out following what Trump is doing. Right. When Obama was in office, I'm I'm not gonna lie, things were a little quiet. Right. It it was. You, well, you not, didn't, well, you're talking about in terms of race relations? Yeah. I mean it, it, well, it was, you didn't see okay, when Obama was in office, you ain't seen nobody coming out with no tiki torches. Right, I got you. It. ain't see that. 
Right. You did. You there did there was a heightened it. race, but like you said, you didn't see that. You you didn't see it. Yeah. You didn't. Now, when Trump get in office, what happens? They come out with tiki torches. Right. You know, and it almost seemed like a regression back yeah, to the sixties. They they coming out with tiki torches. They they got this going on and they got that going on. It's it's like what's what's going on? Right. Right. And you know, and my whole thing is, you know, my whole thing is okay. I'm an advocate of whatever you gonna be. At least be don't be a hypocrite with it. Right. Don't be a hypocrite right. with it. Don't be a part time. Right. Like this gonna sound kind of maybe facetious or, you know, um out of place, but don't be a part time racist. Right. Now here's the thing. When Trump- well, let, well let me let me finish the point, because hit my, my point is coming behind it. Let's say that you have somebody that hates all white people mm-hmm. or hates all mm-hmm. black people. Mm-hmm. All right, let me start with the people uh, you know that may hate white people. Mm-hmm. Um well don't shake JJ Reddick's hand for the 76ers. Mm-hmm. Because if you're a racist, be a be a, be a don't be a hypocritical one. Yeah. If you hate all black people, don't take a picture with LeBron James. Yeah. You know, don't yeah. don't make an exception and and that's what you that's how hypocritical, you know, uh, you know, racists tend to be. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like you make exceptions for like celebrities. Yeah. If you are if you're a true racist, then you need at least be consistent and don't be a hypocrite mm-hmm. with it. Now, yeah. I'm not I'm not I'm not condoning it. I'm just I'm just pointing out the hypocrisy mm-hmm. within it mm-hmm. because I, I you know you 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 see people who allegedly don't like black people, don't like white people, but yet you're taking you're taking pictures and shaking hands with celebrities of the opposite mm-hmm. color, mm-hmm. and I'm like, is something wrong with that? Yeah, yeah something cause wrong. Because my, my my whole my whole thing is now when Trump get out of office and somebody else get in office, what what you going to do? Right. And, and this person happens to love black people. What you want to do? Come out and start loving black people? You were just hating on us a, a year ago. Well, I don't think that'll happen. I but mean, I'm, I'm, you see what yeah, I'm saying? I understand you see what your I'm point. Saying? It's yeah. like whatever's going, whatever, it's like they're followers. They're not right. leaders. They, if, 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 they, if there was a leader who opposed it, yeah. they would hate, they would end up hating a leader. That's how that go. I mean, look at look at Lincoln, who you know he was the one that signed away slavery, and they end up killing him. Mm-hmm. You know, see what I'm saying? So it's like it just goes to show you that you know that, that race relations in our country, um, we we, it, we we got a long way to go. Do do I ever think it's going to go anywhere? No. No. And my and my and my premise for that is because when you're dealing with the heart of man. You know everybody's not going to have a change of heart in the world. Mm-hmm. Statistically, that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Probability says that's not going to happen. And there's always going to be someone that willfully wants to hate somebody, you know? And, I mean, take LeBron James. A few years ago, he had his house vandalized. They wrote nigger on his house, spray painted. Now, LeBron James ain't going to rob nobody. He's almost a, he's almost a what, a, a, a near billionaire. Mm-hmm. Who he, who pocketbook he going to rob? Why did he have to have that? Written on his house. And he handled it with a lot of dignity, a lot of class, uh, talking about, you know, race relations. But then the world gets topsy turvy when people like LeBron James and Colin Kaepernick are using their platform to bring awareness, Mm -hmm. to bring attention. This is why. Because we still have not totally overcome. Yeah. So. Yep. That's that's it right there. I mean, it's it's. Wow. It just makes you sit back and go, just say, wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, because every time you think that we're taking a few steps forward, it's always a few steps back yeah. in the opposite direction. Yep. 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 And it's That's just, it it's is. just, uh, it's, it's just, it's just, it's unbelievable. And, um, but, you know, like I said, I'm an advocate of when something is constant and something is in place and, how do I take the power back mm-hmm. so that I can be stable and consistent within myself yeah, yeah. and who I am, despite how other people may act, view me, uh, view my culture, my race? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that's I'm an advocate of taking the power back. So how do I need what what does my perspective need to be? My heart set need to be and my behavior needs to be towards this racial issue Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and uh you know you 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 know though you you know you don't lack in terms of understanding and awareness but at the same time you can always say hey i don't have to act like that Mm -hmm. i don't have to act Mm -hmm. like that i don't have to be like that you know so yeah but nonetheless it is black history month and uh we're gonna be bringing 
you guys inserts from African-American leaders, albeit Dr. Martin Luther King, so forth and so on in honor of Black History Month. And um, yeah, you know, black people have been uh, responsible for contributing a lot of greatness to uh, society, to this world. Uh, we created the refrigerator, the water gun, the mm-hmm, stop sign, mm-hmm. the light bulb, the first blood transfusion, mm-hmm. and the list goes on and, and on, on and, and on. on. And so we're going to be bringing, uh, you know, some information, some knowledge, some inserts uh, in honor of Black History uh, Month each week. And uh, mm-hmm. Nick kicked it off with Dr. Martin Luther King. Yeah, you we got some it? other stuff lined up for you guys, too. Yeah. You're going to enjoy today's show. Okay, okay. Well, nonetheless, it's the Kevin and Nicky Show on iHeartRadio. I'm actor Kevin D. Benton. And I'm actor Sneaky Warren. And look, Nick, we are back in full effect. Yes. Yeah, we are back in full effect. Full yes, effect, yes, full yes, effect. yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, always excited to be back for another edition, another episode of the Kevin and Nicky Show uh-huh. our radio, uh-huh. yeah. So we always got a lot to talk about. Got a lot to going on. Yes. So with that said, it's now time for the many adventures of Kevin and the Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So uh-huh. you go first. I'm going first. Well, <laughs> you go first. Uh, you know, well, you know, we're always staying on the grind. Mm-hmm. Uh, rather, we're auditioning, uh, submitting. Uh, online and things like that, or just working. I like to say working while we're waiting uh, to hear back and, you know, just staying on top of lines and yeah. preparing for the roles that we do have upcoming. And so, uh, you know, it's been, uh, I want to say pretty quiet in it's the been forefront. It's been a quiet week. It has. Yeah, it's been a pretty quiet in the it's forefront, been but we've been, we've been working while we've been waiting. Yeah, working yeah. and waiting. Yeah, working while we're waiting. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, always trying to say that know, real fast. Work, Five times. Working while we waiting. Working while we waiting. Working while we waiting. Working while we wait. Working while we waiting. Working while we waiting. Okay. All right, I got one for you. Since you want to throw that in, no, I want you to say "Unique New York" five times real fast. No, I can't do it. Unique New York. Unique New York. Unique faster Unique. than that. No, that's it. It's fast. Let me see you do it. No, I know. Unique I can't do it. New York. Go ahead. Ready? One, two, three. Go. Unique. You, know. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't making that the first one. <laughs> I messed it up. Uh, that's all right. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, other than that, man, just uh, you know, just excited about uh, the things that we have coming up, and um, you know, looking forward to it. So, anything? Oh, the only other thing um, I think that's going on. Uh, we got. We'll keep you guys posted. Um, we filmed a movie in New York a few years ago called Every Time I Die. Mm-hmm. And uh, Nikki and I played nurses in that movie. And uh, it is headed uh, for the worldwide premiere at the SinQuest Film Festival in San Jose, California in March. And so for our listening audience that are out in California. California, yay. California, yay. We're going to be keeping you guys posted about that in, in the surrounding West Coast area. Yes. Uh, make it out to see this movie. It's a real, real good movie. Uh, you're going to really, really enjoy it. And, uh, you know, look for me and Nick. We'll yeah. 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 Look look for your man. Look for your woman. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, so yeah, it's been it's been quiet, you know, quiet digging up into the scripts, getting ready to film, you know, and um, taking time out to enjoy. Well, try mm-hmm. to enjoy some movies because you know we're actors, so our way of watching movies is not the same yeah, yeah, yeah. because we're always looking for angles. We're looking for like, oh, that person looked in the camera, yeah, you know, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. And then, you know, just seeing what, trying to figure out what camera they used when they were shooting the film right, and, right. and you know, studying body languages and different things like that. Yeah. So, you know, as an actor, it's, it's kind of, um, it's, it's kind of like, it's not difficult, but when you're watching a movie like, oh, Watch it. That person looked in the camera. Right, Look, right, watch, right. watch. You know, so that's the exciting part of it. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. That's what they say. Like once you get into acting, man, you never see movies the same. And I agree with that. Just reflecting on, you know, how I used to watch movies and how I watch them now. Um, you know, it is, and then, and also, you know, we watch to learn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we we yeah. watch a uh, seasoned veteran actors and actresses, and uh, you know, you try to you know glean what you can and. Add it to your own style, your mm-hmm, own flavor, mm-hmm, your own personality, mm-hmm. and, and things like that. So it is truly, truly, definitely the mm-hmm. actors like we're always growing, developing, 
uh, working on our craft. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just trying to get better every day. You know what I mean? Just trying to get better every day. So. And mm -hmm. if you guys have Prime Video, go to Prime and check out The Covington Witches. Mm -hmm. I play Carrie Covington, one of the the matriarchs of the family, the mm -hmm. head witch of the family, directed by Roz Carter. Filmed by Roz Carter. Go to season one, episode one is on Prime. Now it's about like 38 minutes. Mm -hmm. Check it out, check it out, and you will see me. Was your eyes rolling back in your head? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because I had to. Had to I, I can't give it away. Oh, you, you had to cast a spell. I right? had to cast a spell. Well, I think so, that, that's not giving too much away because witches, witches, witches can't. Not giving too much. Witches cast spells. Spell, so. But yeah, go check it out. It's called The Covington Witches, Covington Witches, and uh, Season 1, Episode 1 is up now. That's what's up. Season 1, Episode 2, we will start filming that in about a few weeks. Okay. That's yep. what's up. That's what's up. Yes. All right. So, yeah. other than that, you other know, like I said, that. just uh, staying on the grind. Yep, yep, staying on the grind and, you know, just having fun, you know, working while we're waiting and watching our stuff. Up on Amazon Prime. Right, right. Yeah. Yep. That's what's up. All right. All, All right, right. So we're going to so, take a break. Yeah. So we're, we're going to take, take a break. break but before, before we do, we have a super talented guest. Yes. On the line. Yes. And we're not going to tell you who she is. Just let, you know, we don't never reveal who they are. Yes. At the onset. You know what I mean? Yes. But uh, she's very, 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 very talented. And you really, really are going to enjoy hearing about her acting journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's a phenomenal actress. And, well, we can say that she is a part of the multi-award multi winning film, Delaware, Delaware Shore. Shore. And a whole yeah. lot of other stuff, too. Yeah, so we got gonna, a lot of other stuff. Yeah, she got a lot of stuff. And we, you know what? Now that I think about it, we've been in some projects together, too. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about yeah? it. Yeah. All right. So listen, don't go nowhere. Don't touch that dial. This is the Kevin and Nikki Show on iHeartRadio. We're on iHeartRadio, but we all around the world. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. We'll be right back. <laughs> Show you. Yeah. 
Maroon, I had to Maroon help Five. Out. I had to help out Maroon Five because you know everyone said the Super Bowl was a bust. I know I was going to ask you. You know what? I said Nick over here trying to save Maroon Five. Trying to save them. You know they said it was a bust. Yeah. It was the boringest Super Bowl ever. Well, I think, and I read a little bit. I read some uh, an article. I didn't read a lot of it. I just read a couple paragraphs, and they were saying that it was just like it, uh, their performance was. Plain, it was safe. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he really didn't take much risk yeah. and things like that. Yeah. And you know, so you know, the Super Bowl, you gotta let it all hang you out. You gotta let it all out. And they they said, you know, he even took his clothes off, and that still didn't help. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> now you know it that still ain't help. Didn't work. You know that ain't help. Now you know that didn't yeah, work, yeah. ladies. I don't know what I don't yeah. know what to say. But so, yeah, I said, you know, I, you know, as I'm sitting there, I said, Nick always trying to save Maroon. I'm 5. trying to save him. You know, you. you know. But I, I like Maroon Five. Maroon Five, big boy. Yeah. And who was the other one? Who's the other one who sang who got up there too? Uh, other rapper. I know it was Maroon Five, was it Big Boy, and I think it was Travis. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, Travis. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, they See, tried. See, we, we have a hard time remembering. That's how boring this was. That's how boring it was. We, that was we, the, you know, they tried. They tried. Yeah, they, they tried. tried. That was but, the boring uh, bowl. I mean, that, that, you know, but like, like we said in sports. That was, that, I like that. The boring bowl. It was the boring bowl. <laughs> it was the boring bowl. I love it. I love and, it. I love you know, it. but like I said, if you were a fan of defense, it was a low scoring game. But it was it was no excitement. It was like three and out, three and out. The other yeah. team ball, the other team ball, and you just you knew the Patriots were going to score eventually because it's like Michael Jordan. You know if he's missing, 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 he's going to eventually make a shot. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Patriots pulled it out. But we don't want to rehash old bones. But Maroon Five featuring Christina Aguilera. Yeah, maybe she should have came out. Yeah, maybe she would. Have Everyone came out. loves Christina. Yeah. You know, you know, uh, she has a phenomenal story. I heard you know, it. I heard it. I heard yeah, it. Yeah, you know, yeah. she was picked on horribly. I heard she was bullied. Yeah, 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 yeah she yeah. was bullied horribly in school. And when she came out with that song, Genie in a Bottle, yeah, yeah, yeah. the table started to turn for yeah. her. And then all of a sudden, everybody wanted, wanted to, to hang her, around her because yeah. they didn't know she could sing like right, that. Right, right, That's right. That's what it right. was. So she turned her pain into singing. Right. And it was like, hold up. Yeah. And you know what? And, the, you know, I, I know when she was going through that circumstance, she didn't see the inspiration right. to everybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, on the back end of it. But it's one of those yeah. things that you got to be careful how, who, how you treat people. Yeah. You never know who you're mistreating and what they're becoming mm-hmm. or who they are. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I was like, man, that sounds like my job. That's why you got to treat people with kindness. <laughs> you got to treat people with kindness. You never, never know, know who they are. Yeah. Who they are. And what they become. And you yeah. never know that these people can be the people that the Lord put in position to bless you. Right, right, right. So you're treating your dreams them nasty. Lord. Yeah. You know, you miss your blessing. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? You yeah. gonna miss your blessing. So Absolutely. you gotta treat people with love and kindness and Absolutely. respect because you never know yeah. who they know, who knows somebody, who knows yeah. somebody, who knows somebody that can put you on, but right. you messed up. And you, and you know something? I mean, you know, I, like I said, I do all kinds of studies, doctrine, theological, psychology. Like I'm just, I'm just information driven because I, I want to ever be learning and, you know, yeah. developing holistically with intellectually being, of course, one of them. And, you know, from a doctrinal and theological standpoint, anytime like Jesus asked people to do stuff, it always took faith. Yeah. So yeah. let's say you got two people. One doesn't like one. It's going to take some faith to become that person's friend. It is. But most people don't don't get there. So like you said, they miss their blessing. They miss your, you miss Because if it was that easy, it you know, the, the divide wouldn't be there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So maybe, and I'm just stating, I'm not saying in all situations, could it be the very person you don't like on your job or wherever, wherever, that's the one that God wants to use to help you. Uh, I ain't going to say all that. See, here you go. You're going to miss your blessing. No, because you got some crazy people on your job. Oh, yeah, I do. I do. I ain't going (laughs) to lie. I don't know about my job, but your job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah, I I do. I ain't going to lie. No. I'm not going to lie. But see, but see, I look at them like the person. Like the people that was treating Christina bad. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because I don't, I don't go to work telling all my business. Yeah. So you know, like they don't know a lot about me mm-hmm. in terms of acting and how accomplished I am. And you know, I just continue to let them judge me. Yeah. But you know, but then like yeah, I said, they're going to be seeing me on the big screen regularly. Yes. They're going to be seeing me on TV regularly. regularly. And that's mm-hmm. the guy we were, you know, treating bad and mm-hmm. all that old stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I know, I know my Christina Aguilera testimony is coming. It's coming. It's on its way. Yeah. It's so I'm, I'm encouraged from that it's standpoint. Coming. But anyway, um, we got a special guest, guys. Yes. Who y'all are going yes. to enjoy yes. hearing about her journey. And we just want to 
give an idea who we have. We have no other than Miss Sharon Pack Withers. Uh, she is, has been an on-air talent for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. Her journey began through the world of fitness when she hosted the TV show Bringing Fitness to You. That led her to doing about six or seven fitness videos, and she was a regular fitness segment contributor for Good Day Philadelphia nice. and other Comcast shows. Nice. Starting in 2007, she began producing art and craft, instructional videos, 10 in total. And this is where Sharon really learned the business, mm -hmm. writing her own copy, working on set design, putting together the shot lists, and of course, on-air talent. Mm -hmm. She used to be a hairdresser, so she also does her own hair and makeup. And that's, nice. you, you know you need that in acting. Yes, you do. Yeah, yeah. Not everybody can. That's um, right. You can't let everybody do your makeup. You cannot. Yeah. You cannot. Yeah. But her, her uh, roster of roles... And she has a very, very uh, decorated resume, uh, but her roster of roles and characters include, but are not limited to, historical women in documentaries, wife, judge, nurse, doctor, politician, patient, mom, grandmom in movies, commercial TV shows, print ads, and she even does comedy skits, nice. radio spots, you name it, she does it, and much, much more. You name it. Uh-huh. She's great with the teleprompter as well as improv. And Sharon has some dazzling comedic timing. Just nice, ask her. Nice. So just to read some of the projects that she's been in, uh, Heroes of the Street, uh, where she played Holly Racine, um, 2015, The Crucible, How Norman Works in a Box. Mm. Uh, she played in Choices, of course, Delaware Shore, which we're going to talk a little bit about tonight. The Funeral, Brotherly Love. Urban Trinity, the story of the Catholic Philadelphia. Uh, you know, I was in that as well. Uh, Cocoon. She played in High, uh, and she was the Judge Yates in Where's Daddy? Wait a minute. Rail Dodell. She was in Cocoon? Cocoon, 2015. She played Kathleen Kelly as Sharon Pack Withers. Now, you know, when nice. you play yourself, you know you're nice. But anyway. I love Cocoon. Yeah, yeah, no question. Uh, but she played in Where's Daddy, the documentary mm -hmm. by, uh, Friend to the show, Rel Friend Dottel. Friend to the show, Rel, Rel mm -hmm. And she played also in the Fugitive Slave Trial. And you can even see this video in Center City, Philadelphia, at the Visitor Center on 5th and Market. Nice. We have none other than Miss Sharon Pat with us. <laughs> she get the bell. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Well, for starters, thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, on behalf of Nikki and I and the Kevin and Nikki show for taking yes. time out of your busy schedule to come on the show and share with our listeners and share with us. So we always start by displaying our attitude of gratitude to our our awesome guests. Yes. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, listen, so we, let's, let's jump right on let's into it. Jump right on into yeah. it. You, you got all that awesome stuff, all that awesome stuff on your resume. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you got much, much yeah. more than that going on. So tell our listeners a little bit about how you got started. Um, I have actually I was in the fitness business for about 26 years and my knee went out and I had to figure out what I was doing next. Mm. And I kind of looked around, and so I had I had not been an actor in my younger years. Okay, I'm seven years old right now, so I've been doing this about five years. Okay, uh, as an actor, I my fitness stuff, my on air making videos. I've been doing that for a lot of years, but straight acting, learning other people's lines, and doing other projects other than my own. That's only been the last five years. Nice, and um, it's something I enjoy doing. Nice. And, and I just want to tell you, I mean, you guys gave me a really great build-up. I want to thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. I don't think it's so much my talent as much as I am a hustler. I got you. I'm working. I like that. I like and, that. And directors can depend on me. Yes. Got you. Because they know when they hire me that I'm going to show up on time, know my lines, hit the mark, and, and come with five different variations on the character. So if they don't like my first choice, I have other choices for them to pick from. Awesome. And um, that's what actually happened when I I played in the movie uh, Where's Daddy? Mm -hmm. Yes. Scott Dennis and Rel Dow, you were talking about that. So yeah. I was the main judge. 
I'm right, not right. Giving the credit to one not. I'm the judge yelling at people. Yeah. So um, I wasn't sure how they wanted it. So I actually showed up, and my first choice was nice judge. Okay. I wanted to be the nice lady, but that's not what Rel and Sky wanted. <laughs> that's <laughs> like, wow. it up. So I had that, and and so I was able to give them what they wanted. And nice. I kind of argued with my directors. Like they have a vision. I'm a piece of the pie. That's going to help them create, and and that's what I did. Awesome, you, awesome. You know what? You know, you know that was that was very very profound and powerful yeah. what you're sharing uh, because it, it you know like I like how you started it off. You said, well, it's not about you know my resume and being the most talented, mm-hmm. you know, and you went into all these professional attributes about you mm-hmm. that make you a a reliable actress a dependable actress you know um you, you know you talked about hey my part is just a small piece of the pie that goes into the bigger scope of what the director's trying yeah. to do yeah. and i must say um you know Nikki and i we saw the uh the uh, documentary yeah, Where's, Where's Daddy? Daddy you did a phenomenal job you kind of remind me that judge on tv is it judge million uh, uh what, what's the late she's she's a tough judge and you kind of even look like her. Ju- not just Judy. Um, oh, man, I can't remember. Oh, I know who you mean. I know exactly who you mean. I don't remember. Yeah, she's the Latino judge. Yeah. Latino. Okay, okay. Yeah, she's the Latino, okay. she's the La- Latino judge. Um, and I watch her regularly. But she is a tough judge. With the blonde hair. She got uh, blonde hair. Uh, she don't really have, no, not, that's, no, she doesn't have blonde no, hair. No, 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 no. Yeah, she got brunette. brunette. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Well, I can't remember her name. I know it's slipping my mind, but you kind of reminded me yeah. of her so yeah. much. And <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, and you did, you did a, you did a phenomenal job. And you know, as you know, we're sitting there watching. It's like, wow, yeah, she really she reminds did, me of that judge. Yeah, she did. She and did. Uh, you know, to kind of hear the behind the story, behind the scenes, that you know, this this was a variation yeah. of the judge that you're going to play. It's just awesome. But you yeah. know what? I want. I want to mm-hmm. go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I'm going to give you another piece of trivia. So, in that scene, in Go Daddy, oh, Go Daddy, where's Chad? Um, when I'm the judge, I'm sensing Toby Gaddison. Uh-huh. And right, right. I love Toby Gaddison. Toby Gaddison is, has been my acting coach. He's nice. a mentor. Nice. He's someone I, I absolutely adore. And I had a, I had a scream at him wow. like a fishwife and sentenced him to prison. The tears are rolling down his face. Mm. And I had to be really, really mean to him. Wow. And the only way I got through that scene, I had reading glasses. Now, if anyone out there has reading glasses, you know you can't see past five feet. Right, right, right. right. He, was about 20, he was about 20 feet away. So in that scene, I have reading glasses pushed all the way up on my face, and I'm screaming at him through reading glasses because I can't see him. Gotcha. And that's how I was able to do that. Gotcha. Because he is the sweetest, kindest, nicest man. And it broke my heart. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. I got and you. That's how I got through it. I hear you. <laughs> okay. But you know what? I, I want to talk about that a little bit because she says she has five different characters, right. you know, in her back pocket for that one person. Right, right. And so, and you know, some actors, you know, when you give them an adjustment, they can't even make the adjustment right. to bring the, the um, character out a different way. So talk a little bit about how you're able to do that. Rehearsal. Okay. Rehearsal. Rehearsing lots of things. Um, Delaware Shore, in the, in the movie Delaware Shore, my character is Fanny Regina. Mm-hmm. And uh, I am a Holocaust survivor. I right. play a character much older than myself. I had a gray wig and no makeup. Okay. She all my stunt talents and um, you know, no, 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 no vanity, no vanity with that role. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, and without giving away the plot of the movie, I certainly don't want to do that. I have to go on and describe the horrors mm. that were committed against me as a young girl in a concentration camp. And so there's many levels of emotion that can go with that. Some people after six decades are numb. Yeah. Other people cannot shake horrors. I mean, you can't, you can't imagine. And some people can never, ever shake those horrors, even uh, six decades later. And so when I brought that role, when I was working on that role, I, I rehearsed everything from psychological numbness and, like, just going a woman who goes through life and to someone who pierces her soul every single day. 
Wow. And then all those shades of gray in between. Mm. So when I showed up to perform, uh, like has Perry, the, the director, uh, there were points he said, crank it up a little bit. There was other points he said, no, bring it down. It's too much. It's too much. And I was able to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Because they're, cause they're, especially when the camera's on close up. Right, right, um, right. Sometimes uh, emotional scenes, yeah. if you're struggling to hold the tears back, is more heart gut wrenching than actually watching somebody cry. Right, oh, right, right, right. Watching okay. somebody hold, like, watching the pain of somebody holding it in sometimes is harder to watch. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, so, I, and so, so there's lots of ways, so I just came up with like, what, three different ways? Mm-hmm. I have to like how to go about playing it. And now, because sometimes they, the director doesn't know, like he thinks he wants it, he or she, thinks they want it one particular way, and then as an actor, if we bring something else, then we go, oh, right. let's try that. And that's, I've had that, where they'll say, play it this whole other way, and I'll see what it looks like in editing. Mm. To go where go to edit it. We, we, we'll just take it as, a, as an extra scene. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Got you. Nice. Well, I'm, you know, we, of course, we saw the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was, it was a great movie. Just very, very thankful to be a par- small part of it. But watching your part, um, you, you played that part. You did a fantastic job playing your part because it, you didn't, pert- you didn't come off like you were talking about the weather as you were talking about the pain mm-hmm, and the mm-hmm, horror. Mm-hmm. Like that was displayed. In your uh, stillness, and I'm going to talk about that stillness. Mm-hmm. That was because you know, like you said, you, mm-hmm. it, it was a close up. That was displayed in your stillness. That was displayed in your your facial expressions, and you know, and, and even though you were still, it was still displayed in your body language as well, and that conveyed and permeated th- through the screen. Um, and then, uh, of course, on the heels of your scene, they started flashing back to some of the actual footage, mm-hmm. which really reinforced your scene. Which I, which I thought was, it was a very important scene because it seemed to me that the theme was that you, that you said was never forget. Yeah. Never yeah, forget. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, as a little aside, I, I am Jewish, mm-hmm. but my family got out of Europe in time. Like my family all emigrated to the United States in the early 1900s. And I think by like 1919. The last of them had, had left Europe. Okay. And so our family doesn't doesn't share this story. I know people who are concentration camp survivors. Oh, wow. And in fact, I don't know if you... And so one of the things I thought of doing was um, putting the numbers on my forearm. Mm. Like no one thought of that. And I... Because I started really thinking about... And because I remember going to parties, family parties when I was a teenager, and people's grandparents would have the numbers on their arms. Wow. Because they were young enough that they were they were camp survivors. Wow. And um, so that was a piece of the character, like when I thought about who is this woman, was, and she would have been tattooed. Mm. She would have been tattooed with the numbers. Yeah. Wow. 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 So, so let me ask you, and maybe you kind of already alluded to it, you know, as someone who is Jewish, mm-hmm. what, I mean, what was it, and kind of having uh, some connectivity to the storyline, um, and you did, of course you're playing a character, you know, a lot of time people talk about slavery, mm-hmm. they talk about, you know, 9-11, all of which were horrific narratives. What was it like to be able to be a part of a Jewish narrative, you know, being Jewish and having a connectivity, some Mm -hmm, connectivity mm -hmm. with, you know, Holocaust survivors, rather it was in your family and things of the sort. Actually, where I connected, now I lost my own mother 31 years ago, but the character I played was born two months after my mother. The character I played was my mother's contemporary. Okay. And all I kept thinking was, if my grandparents hadn't gotten out of Europe when they did, I was I probably would be telling my mother's story. Wow. And that <laughs> that's what hit me. Mm. That's wow. what hit me. Like like if it wasn't for my, my grandparents, all four sets of grandparents, like seeing the writing on the wall, yeah. and getting out in time, um, this this would have been my story. And mm. this would have been my 
my mother's story. Wow. Because she would have been the right age. She yeah, was in 1929. Yeah. My, my, that's when my character was born, and that's when my mother was born. Wow. 1929. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's, that's awesome. That's, and, and it, people, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, that, and, and we that's appreciate amazing. you, you know, kind of giving, you know, us and our listening audience kind of like this behind the scenes yeah. exclusive uh, you know, information. Uh and you know, it just goes to show you that you never know what goes into know. a scene or you know yeah. what a person is bringing to the scene. And one thing I do like about acting is that we can channel our good, bad, and ugly experiences into characters. Mm-hmm. We can draw from mm-hmm. those to like, it, it, I guess what I want to say is that, that they have some kind of purpose and use as an actor or an actress. Mm-hmm. They can be used. Yeah. But yeah. Some, some, sometimes it's, it's rough, yeah. you know, it's, it's rough to be able to do that. So how did, you, how did it make you feel doing that, telling that story and, and, and how did it make you feel? Exhausted. I got you. It, was, it was immersive training. I also do comedy. Uh-huh. And, and what I like about, because I do need something out. Like that hot, that heavy hitting drama and having to tell a story of, of horrors. Yeah. Of concentration camp horrors. And then rehearsing it six different or five different versions mm-hmm. of explaining my horrors. Yeah. And truly getting into the character. And realizing my mother's contemporary and all this other stuff and working on it for months mm. really drained me. Yeah. And wow. uh, I have to give a shout out. Actually, um, one of my acting friends, Jesse Bradley, mm-hmm. he was a game partner and he played opposite me in acting class as I was rehearsing the scene. Mm-hmm. So he sat through and listened to me do that dozens of times. Mm. So I got to give a shout out to Jesse Bradley. <laughs> shout out to Jesse! <laughs> yes. Yeah. For having to like, take it in, like to listen and not, you know, and, and play opposite. Absolutely. Play opposite somebody telling that story. Wow. Uh, yeah. That could have been easy. I could listen. Yeah. You know, and, you know, we've, of course, interviewed uh, other cast members from Delaware Shore. And, you know, mm-hmm. I think everyone at some point has said, uh, especially with the, you know, the characters that required more mm-hmm. emotionally, mm-hmm. that it was an emotionally draining experience because, you know, as an actor and an actress, we we're still the person at the mm-hmm, end of the day and mm-hmm. we invest emotionally. And if we have any experience or connectivity with the character, it takes more out of us mm-hmm. and things like that. And so, yeah, there definitely is an emotional investment. And my, my question would be afterwards, yeah. how would you, how would you kind of bring yourself back to mm-hmm. being Sharon, the, the happy comedic, you know, person that was able to, maybe let that go mm-hmm. the best way you mm-hmm. could. Like everybody, some people listen to music. Some people may watch comedy. Yeah. What was your technique to, you know, with such a strong, emotionally draining character that, that required a lot. How did you come down from that? Okay, well, to get into character, I had a wig. I had thick black stockings. I was dressing like an elderly woman. I, bent, I was bent over. I had a cane. I had a lot of props around me. So when I was done rehearsing, when I was done doing the character, I would take the props off, and I felt that to be freeing. I got you. Okay. 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 Because it was it was almost like 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 a shroud. I Um, got you. Because she's not, you know, um, I come in and tell a sad story and somehow bring a sense of relief to other people. I don't know what I do for myself, but I help other people. Right. Um, when I when I come in, well, yeah, because I had I realized I, I realized because it was really such um, an intense character, and I can't thank Rag have enough. Rag have probably the director for giving me a chance yeah. and and really letting me play this character because wow. it was it was the biggest character I played, the most emotional scene I had, mm-hmm. and um, he, he trusted me. Because yeah. With it. And mm-hmm. I really am appreciative of that. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, I had to learn how how to remove myself from the character because that would just take over your life. Yeah. Like absolutely. Start owning it. Yeah. And, and that's not healthy. Right. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. We hear, we hear 
lot of actors. I'm trying to think of the guy who played Lincoln, a gentleman. I can't think of his name. Mm-hmm. But anyway, there's lots of actors that really get immersed yeah. and they lose weight, gain weight, and it takes over their whole physical being. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I, I don't know how often I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, one, wow. one, one of the char- yeah, one of the characters that comes to the the top of my head, uh, Heath Ledger, rest in peace, Heath Ledger, who played the Joker. Uh, they yeah. said that even yeah. when they would uh, yell "cut," he would still be in character as the yeah. Joker, and it was really creepy. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. So yeah. it's like we really have to be careful to take care of our yep. well being. Yeah, you know, our mental, emotional well being, getting immersed in these intense characters and things like that. So this yeah. is definitely good information. You know, um, this is you know, awesome. for, this is definitely good information for us as actors and actresses, or uh, how, how to take care of yourself mm-hmm. because once again. You know, we're still the vessel right. that's being used to right. play these characters. And and our job is to be the best believable us. And the best way that we can do that is, like you said, get into the character, get into the mindset, get into the emotion, get into the behavior mm-hmm. of that character. The only thing is when it's over, when how, it's do we over. Come, how do we come you back come out? Back. <laughs> you got to come back out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You got to come back. Absolutely. That's good, good yeah. information. Yeah. So I think about, you know, no, go ahead. I'm one sorry. Of the roles I've always wanted, one of the roles I've always wanted to play is like it in Baka Mom. Okay. A real mess of a mom. And yeah, and it's like, yeah, you like figure out what the costuming is going to be so that when you're done being, you know, drunk and drug addict mom, then you can take off the costuming because yeah, you don't want to live with that character. Right. Or costume or whatever. Like, you don't want to be living that. You have to figure out what is the, like, uh, Jack Lennon. Mm hmm. Uh, and a lot of his characters. And because he would put the hat on, and then that would be, be the character. Gotcha. That, that would be who he was. Gotcha. And um, that's what he did. Awesome. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So what was it like being a part of Delaware Shore, this multi, multi award winning film? It had Oscar buzz, consideration, yeah. contention. Yeah. What was it like uh, being a part of that? And I definitely want to give a shout out to the super talented director, Rock Out Perry. Perry. Yes. For, like you said, giving all of us an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um Michelangelo Rodriguez, who wrote the book, book. and uh, that, you know, that the movie became. And I definitely got to give a shout out to the whole entire cast Mm -hmm, and crew mm -hmm. and production team who worked so hard. But what was it like being a part of a movie that had Oscar buzz, Oscar contentions? They put the Oscar, the 347, and your name was up there, Sharon. And they had yeah. Den of Thieves was uh-huh. with, Den uh-huh. of Thieves was above ours, yep. and Death Wish with Bruce yep. Willis yep. was yep. below. And you know, I mean, no, Death Wish was before above ours, right? Then it was yeah. Delaware Shore. Yeah. Then it was Den of, Den of Thieves, some yeah. kind of something like that. But you're, you know, my name was up there. I mean, and it's got Oscar contention. Right. What was that like seeing that? Oh, uh, you know what's interesting? Like when so when that log happened. And he offered, I auditioned, he offered me the part. And I don't think about that stuff. Like mm-hmm. My job, I, I looked at it that it's my job that I'm going to come in with this great character, mm-hmm. many of her variations on this one great character. And I just played my scene opposite um, Emily Hill. Right. Okay. I played the next bit. Played Tasha, yeah. And, yes, yeah, yeah. And so Emily and I played the scene off of each other. And that's the old person, that's the person I worked opposite. Right. Because, like, if I, if I wasn't needed on the set, I didn't show up to the beach. I didn't show up to the different houses and, and whatnot where they shot the scene. Mm-hmm. I just came in for my, for my one scene. I got you. Um, so I didn't want to say, oh, we're talking about a work family. Um, and that, and that was good. <laughs> and that was cool. Mm-hmm. Right. So it was good. You, you you were so humble and so yes, professional. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know. Now listen, I, let me re, maybe I need yeah. to rephrase it. Yeah. Um. So I well, let me speak for myself. First of all, like we when we um and we and I definitely appreciate I definitely appreciate your you know your very humble a- approach to the movie because like you said we only filmed our scene and we didn't get a chance to mm-hmm. see other people's scene but then we see it all come together when we see the movie but we 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 yeah. we, we as actors we're always looking for opportunities. Um, when we get involved with 
projects. We don't know where it's going to go. We don't know how far it's going to go. But with Delaware Shore, which kind of took a life of his own, mm-hmm. and I think it was one that none of us anticipated, maybe not even Raga, you know, it, it makes the 347 finalists mm-hmm. in contention for Oscars. And I know for me, to see my name up there, yeah. it was very, very surreal. I mean, I didn't anticipate it happening. Um, when I saw the post, I was just as shocked and surprised as anybody. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it was just very, very surreal to see your name on the same page with Bruce Willis and 50 Cent mm-hmm. and your Gerard Butler. Gerard, and, Butler yeah, yeah. yeah, Gerard Butler. And so that's what it that's what it did for me. And um it was just it makes you thankful, it makes you humble, it makes you grateful to just having been given an opportunity to be a part of it. She probably had her hallelujah yeah. shout. Yeah. You know. So you sure you didn't you sure you didn't you sure you didn't cut a step and dance when you saw your name? <laughs> I'll just be a funny. Yeah, I hear you. So, let me, so I actually met Raghav Perry, the director, about four years ago. Okay. For the premiere of a short he did called Bar Study. Bar Study, mm-hmm. yeah. I gotta tell you Bar Study. I gotta tell you it's brilliant. It was brilliant. So let me I'm kinda of working the story backwards, but so I was scheduled to be on a student film. I was going to help a kid out and be in a student film. This was four years ago. And uh, in the meantime, and I promised them I'm going to do it on a Saturday. Well, I get a call from the top casting agent in Philly who says that um, they have, uh, M. Night Shyamalan is, is doing something. And for the same day as that kid's movie, M. Night Shyamalan wants me. Oh, wow. And I had promised, I had promised the student filmmaker it was last minute. I didn't want to let him down. So I told the casting agent that I couldn't work for N. Night Shyamalan. Wow. Wow. And the, the next day, the, the student late cancels on me. Oh. me hot, screwed. Oh, like my stars. N. Night Shyamalan, my ship had failed. And I was so bummed. I mean, I'm finding this out. It's four in the morning. The day I'm, I'm waking up to, to make call time and... Oh, sorry, we'll have to make it another day. <gasps> so, well, that taught me two things. And one is um, I don't do student films anymore because they get in the way of what I really should be doing. Mm. <laughs> I learned that. Mm. And, um, and two, never turn down in my channel. Right, right, right. right. That's, was, what, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. it, might, it might call. I was sitting over here like, <laughs> oh, oh, no. It might. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I got you, but we appreciate that. So, okay, so I'm so pumped, and I said, you know what? I have to do something really cool tonight. Like I said to my husband, I got it, and he's like, whatever you want to do, I'll take you wherever you want. And what we did, we wound up, I said, you know what? Some friends of mine are, are going to be in this movie. The movie premiere tonight, it's called Bar Study. Right. Okay. So my husband and I, from a uh, Philly suburb, we drove to Delaware to see Bar Study. And we were the only people that worked on it. Because Rag had looks at me and he's like, how come you're here? <laughs> like, what are you doing here? It's all family. And I tell him the story. And oh, he's wow. like, oh, maybe for your next movie, I'll be in your next movie. And he's like, yeah, okay, we'll see. And what do you know? And that's how I met Rag Wow. Wow. I found out I wasn't in an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Gotcha. Wow. So, you're like, oh, I can't believe it. I, I knew what he was capable of. I knew what Rock had was. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I had seen his previous stuff. I knew he was amazing. Yeah, yeah. And wow. I knew he was a storyteller. I knew he knew what he was doing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm blown away by the recognition. I think he's, the movie has won two dozen awards. Yeah. So I'm, I'm blown away by the volume. Um, but I'm not... Uh, I'm not that surprised that he did such a phenomenal job. Right. Because that's what he does. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I I had a chance to see Bar Study and it was it was phenomenal and that too is a multi award winning uh short film. Uh Leanne Billings is in it. It's got an awesome cab. Yeah. Kevin Ostra's in it. Um and to the yeah. best of my knowledge, uh um it was a couple more actors from Delaware Shore. James Robinson is in it. James Robinson Jr. is in it. It, it was a phenomenal movie. 
And like you said, Ragav does phenomenal work. And, you know, me and Nikki talked about this when we were on our way down to Slaughter Beast to film our scenes. You look at the narrative, you look at the cast, you look at the director, you look at the storyline and you just get that feeling. And I remember telling Nikki, you know, I just feel like this movie, Delaware Short, is going to go far. I just got a good feeling about it. And I told Nick, I said, um, anytime Raga want me to film B- mm-hmm. A roll, B roll, C roll, D roll, I'm going to be there That's because this right. movie is going to go far. And lo and behold, like you said, I mean, between the awards that it has won, including Best Ensemble, which includes all of us, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's just it's just been an amazing ride. It's just yeah. been an amazing ride, and the ride continues. Yes, but but you know what? I I, I got to go back because this is this is this is getting to me. Okay. So so you couldn't call? Could you call the person back and say, "Hey, I'm available"? You know, I'll I'll do the role with M Night. You couldn't do that. Oh yeah, it was four in the morning. <laughs> At that point, it was four in the morning because I was waking up for call time. Oh. I did. I left, a, I left a message on their voicemail like, in case, in case you still need me. Right, right, right. Oh, snap. My shit had failed. My shit had failed. You know what? Left to learn. Yeah, I got you. that's a I huge got you. lesson. Um, and, you know, and, uh, but anyway. I got you. Yeah. You know, you know, I mean, you, yeah, 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 that's a, cause I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you straight up. I have thought about going to the Sixers game and holding up a sign saying, M. Knight, please cast me. Cause you know, he goes to the Sixers games all yes. the time. <laughs> please cast me. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Now, uh, back to your scene for Delaware Shore. It, like I said, it was a very, very pivotal, uh, scene because it, helps the phenomenal actress who plays Tasha, uh, Emily McKinley Hill. She During that conversation, she comes to this realization. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you guys seeing brings out one of the, I want to say one of the biggest challenges. Yeah. And that is yeah. your story gives Emily's character, Tasha, an epiphany that maybe grandma was treating us this way because of all of the pain and suffer suffering and trauma that she went through. And to the best of my knowledge, you begin to allude to this person you knew in the concentration camp named Agnes, which of course is their grandmother. Mm -hmm. And it, it turns out that the theme that comes out of that, or one of them is, can you overlook, not excuse, but move past how someone has hurt you mm-hmm. to see their pain. Yeah. To the point where Tasha and, and uh, Gallagher goes back to grandma while she's on her deathbed. Talk about that theme of being able, you know, here's someone who has caused another person pain. And though Agnes character played by the awesome Miss Gale did love Tasha and Gallagher, she's hurting them because hurt people hurt people. Yeah. And they yeah. were able to say, you know what? Let's go back. Yeah. If you could just talk about that, you know, maybe it's like a twofold question to hurt people, hurt people. And then a being able to not really excuse because it doesn't excuse somebody hurting someone because you're hurting, but being able to forgive. Yeah. I, I think what I do is I give, I bring insight to the character of Tasha. Yeah. Because up until now, she doesn't understand why her grandmother hates her. Right. right. And why does my grandmother hate me and hate my brother? and hate my mother, and hate us, and she doesn't understand where that hate comes from. Um, like I said, I don't want to give away the plot, but I come in, I drop my bombshell, and I say, ooh, well, that explains a lot. <laughs> that explains why. And, and then I think her epiphany is more empathy. Okay, yeah, got you. Yeah, like, yeah, right? yeah. She yeah. becomes empathetic. I wouldn't say pity, but it empathizes with her grandmother because now she can kind of understand mm-hmm. where her grandmother is, is coming from. Yeah. You know, uh, what, what was the second question? So about the hurt people, how hurt people hurt people, you know, in terms of Agnes' yeah. character, um, you know, she's hurting others because her herself is hurting and like, of course, back in that time, they didn't have like Dr. Phil and, you know, maybe the resource that we had. Yeah. So yeah. if you could talk about how, you know, that theme of hurt people, hurt people comes into play as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that, that's exactly what happened. It's two generations mm-hmm. um, of, of people um, abusing each other. 
Yeah. yeah. And that's where these children, Emily McKinley Hill, and um, I'm sorry, I, 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 J- I James Robinson Jr. Yeah, plays Gallagher. Thank you, James Robinson. Yeah. Um, and, and they are second generation of this kind of hurt and anger, and um, I was to work like like they are being used as um when you when you get back at somebody just. As retribution, right, like, right. All these, like, like, let's take it out on the kids. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right, right, right. My yeah. mother did to the mother, and the mother was doing to them, and it's this whole ugly cycle. And it isn't until um, Tasha meets uh, Fanny Regina, like mm-hmm. the doctor, yeah, that it all makes sense, right? Yeah, and yeah. Place. right. And and you know, does she forgive her grandmother? Mm, but you know, she understands it better. Yeah. She can understand it. She can empathize. And maybe she doesn't, you know. Right. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah, because they were being abused by Agnes for a very long time. Yeah. And I would like to think if, if Tasha never met this character right. who was, in, you know, in the concentration camp and knew right, Agnes, right, right. Sh- they probably would have went on the rest of their lives, not even going back to Agnes yeah. to, you know, reconcile right, with her right. and different things like that. Yeah. So by Tasha meeting her, right, right. it just opened the door for some healing to come right, in because right, she was right. able to convince her brother Gallagher, let's, let's go back, you know. Right. Cause the, and, and, you know, cause whether or not they actually quote unquote forgave her, yeah. You have to give them credit for going for back. For going back. Because, you know, maybe had they not met Sharon's character, yeah. maybe there would have been no it going back. There wouldn't have been no going you know? back if they so didn't meet her. You, here it is again. It, it brings out the importance of mentorship. Yeah. You know, how, yeah. you know, um, you know, how mentors are, are, are able to, you know, um, could we, I guess I want to say that even the negative experiences that we've been through in, in life can help someone else yeah. maybe perhaps avoid or maybe to glean from and learn from it. And that's kind of what I saw Sharon's character yeah. do in Regina was kind of like that mentor that gave mm-hmm. her that epiphany. And like you said, Nick, had they not had that meeting, here yeah. she is writing, I think she was writing a book or writing yeah. some notes. And this, yeah. this yeah. I don't want to say, I don't, I don't want to, maybe it was a divine you know, uh, connection, connection that was made, some, something. you know, but it was a much needed conversation. It yeah. was phenomenal. It was, it, it, it was, was a very moving, uh, you know, intense, but moving scene because that was the scene. And I have to admit this, that was the scene that had me walking back to the bus from New York. We saw the premiere in New York challenging myself. Like, could I do what Tasha did? Mm. And when I was on my way to the back to the bus, I was like, nah, I can't do it. But I have grown since then. I have grown since then. I'm open to change. I'm open, of course, to forgive and grow as a person. Mm-hmm. But on my way out that theater, I was like, I don't think I can do it. Tonight. Uh, not tonight, not anyway. Tonight, not tonight. I'm not going back tonight. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it was a, but I, I say that to say, Sharon, that your scene, I mean, everybody did a phenomenal job, but that was a very, very impactful scene because it is a movie that brings about introspection. Yeah, you yeah, ha- you're going to yeah. be forced to look inside and say, hey, how is my pain affecting me? How is it affecting people close to me in the various different you know, scenarios and situations that deal with our human existence, sometimes which is negative? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Very, very yeah. powerful. Yep. Awesome. Well, Sh- well, well, Sharon, you have been a phenomenal guest and yes. all our guests are phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your awesome story. You did a fantastic uh, job in the movie. And um, yeah, we just want to thank you so much for, for coming on and sharing so many nuggets and so many insights and uh, you know, me and Nikki, we always here taking notes because yes, you know, we, we just yep, want to learn and yep, grow yep, too. Yep. And uh you know, you said a lot of powerful stuff that I know that, uh, you know, our listeners are going to glean from. But before we do, we always got, like to give our guests the opportunity to, you know, if you want uh, people to follow you, if you so desire, if you want to put your social media out there. Maybe somebody wants to book you. Maybe M. Knight will listen to this show yes. and book you, Sharon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, I would, I would like to promote my new book. Okay, cool. Nice. Uh, Called 50 Monologues. Okay. Monologues and themes for grown ass women. Whoa. Nice. 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 N
Okay. And it's for um, actresses who are looking for some great uh, monologues, dialogues, and scenes. They're very uh, female-centric, uh, with female, powerful female characters, and a great for acting class. Nice. Nice, nice, Love nice. it. Love, love it. it, love it. Yeah, There's a void in the market for finding great things to use an acting class for people over the age of 30. Nice. There you go. That's it. Go. That's it right there. That's it right there. Y'all heard it here first on the Kevin and Nikki show. Yes. Actress and author and much, much more. Com- mm-hmm. com- comedian. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Multi-talented Sharon Pack with us. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sharon, for coming on. Continue success and blessings yes. to you. Yes. And, um, uh, you gonna get that M night. You gonna get that yeah, M night call. Get M-Night. And we gonna be in the movie with you. <laughs> yeah. How about that? We gonna be right with you. Yeah, we gonna be I'm sitting right next to you. you <laughs> yeah. You're yes, welcome. you're welcome. Yeah, take care. Okay, bye. All right, bye. Man, she was awesome. Awesome, awesome, she was awesome. Awesome, yes. awesome, awesome, awesome. She Man, was awesome. That was, that was great. Man, that was just great. I mean, I'm just kind of just thinking in my mind. Just all the nuggets that were shared. Yeah. Um, oh I, man, I like I like how she said that she has. For one character, she five. got five yeah, that, that, different that, yeah, ways yeah. to bring it out. Yeah, I, and yeah. you know, That's some some people can't even take direction when when the director say, "Okay, give it to me a different way," right, right, and right, they right. can't do it. Right, you know what I mean? Yeah. Make the adjustment yeah. here, That's and they can't make the adjustment here. She walking around with five different people but, 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 in her back pocket. But keep in mind that was. Months and months of preparation before I she know, got there, I and know. so that's what stuck to me. That's stu- it was a lot of things that stuck with me, but that stuck with me too because now she got to get it. Yeah, she get the bell. She get the bell. Yes, so she now, doing her homework, man. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? And that's what I was going to say. Professional, I, I, you're so hearing from a professional minded, yes. professional approach. The first thing she said is not always about being the most talented, but just mm-hmm. knowing you're going to be wardrobe ready. Yep. Know your lines. Yep. Johnny on the spot. Take direction well. Be there on time. Like sometimes these are things that's going to get you in the door or get you to roll. Yep. Other than, you know, talent doesn't always take you to the top. You know who she sound like? Who that? She sound like us. That's right. We talked we about it before. We are wardrobe ready. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny on, on the spot. spot. No our lines. Right. We are ready. That's it. And I, I mean, and I love that five angles of the different yeah same character yep and you know same yeah. character one yeah, character she can deliver five different ways five different ways that's freaking and it's, awesome. and it produ- it pro- it's, it's promoting awesome. and producing something different in terms of that, each of the that's all. and she said she said she gave um raga one character he's like i'll do it another way she said okay i got four I more, got four more i got four more what you need you know what i'm saying i got four more <laughs> she gotta get it again <laughs> She said, yeah, what you need? I got four, what you I got four more. <laughs> That's it. But I listen, it, that, that, listen that helped love me it. because now from here on out, yep. I will have at least two or three renditions of the character. Yep. I and, love and, it. And, and, and it was so many things, man. But definitely, you got to be able to take direction well. You know what? I would That's like big. to. You know what I would like to do? What's that? I would like to sit in the class with her yeah. and just watch her. Yeah. yeah. Just watch her deliver like all of her characters and watch her deliver those characters five different ways. I would love to do that. But you know what? I'm I a, really and, would. And, 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 and I can see her teaching acting class. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I can like, see I would love to see her teach a class. Yeah. And, and five show, different ways to deliver. deliver. Yeah. yeah. And show her students. Five different ways to deliver one character. Yeah. I would love to see her do that. And I, I'm going to say this to you. Um, they say like, you know, like you have Coca-Cola, Pepsi, yeah. things like that. They say it's one ingredient that separates you from everything else. Mm-hmm. That could be one class right there. Yeah. That could be one consistent rolling class. How to deliver the same lines five different ways. And we used to do that in acting class. Remember, um, we was at the kids acting class. He would give us a line to say. He would say, now say it angry. Yeah. Now say it happy. Mm-hmm. Now say it sad. Yeah. So it kind of reminded me of that. How, uh, you know, you know, if, if it was the boy went to the store, we had to say it angry. Yeah. We had to say it happy. Yeah, yeah, say yeah. it sad. And yeah. what we were trying to develop was different ways of being different. Uh-huh. Yeah, shout out to Aiken's act. Aiken, uh, Nakia Nakia Dula. Dula. 
teacher Jamal Bostic Smith. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, like, man. That was a great interview. Yeah, and, and I'm telling you, I just the judge that she great played. Interview. It was it was great interview. It was great. It, it was mm-hmm. it was just it, you, and it's real funny how we've interviewed a lot of the cast from Delaware Shore. And, you know, of course, there's some overriding things mm-hmm. that's, that's you know, constant to the theme of the movie. But it's interesting to talk to different casts mm-hmm. and you can pull out something different. Something different for all of them. For all of them. You but know, it's just great. Though, this is great. I, I know her grandparents mm-hmm. got some stories. Yeah, yeah. I know they got some stories. Yeah. And, yeah. and just to sit underneath them mm-hmm. and hear those stories, yeah. I mean, that... Man, that's yeah. that's just that's just crazy. I used to sit underneath my grandparents when they would tell stories, right, and right, I would right. just sit there for hours and just let them and just talk listen and, and just, just listen. listen. So yeah. I know, I know her people got some stories. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, to actually um, know people who got those numbers on the right, arm. Right, right, oh right, my right, god, right, right. that's crazy. Right. Yeah, that, and, I, that is and, crazy. And, and, and you know, you know. I, I was happy for the Jewish community because it was a movie that yeah. talked about not forgetting them. Because, yeah. like I said, a lot yeah. of times, of course, our narrative is slavery, yeah. you know, and things like that. Yeah. And uh, but, you know, what they went through was horrific as well. Yeah, you know they, what I'm saying? And they got the mark to prove they got it. The, yeah. They got the, yeah. those numbers that on their arm to prove that. Right, right. You know, that's that's just um, yeah. that's just crazy, yeah. you know, to just but to sit underneath them. Mm-hmm. You know, and just hear, yeah. you know, them tell their stories yeah. and the things that they have seen. I don't think um, I can would be able to sit underneath them that long right, without right, going right. into tears right, because right, that's right. that was just bad. yeah, it, it was definitely was it, was just, bad. it was just it was horrific, that was just man. Bad. But you know, if I can flip it to the positive to the here and now, they are that 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 speaks to the resiliency of the Jewish culture. Yeah. You know, to be able to bounce back from that, man, yeah. it's just like, shh. Yeah. 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 So, you know, this this movie, Delaware Shore, has has just in-depth meaning, man, to, to what is so needed now in terms of the human condition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, because it, it shows us what humans are capable of. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it forces us to have to deal with it because yeah. it's, it's put right there right in front of you it so is. it's great it was great it is it yeah. is so, so i'm gonna be marinating now yeah i'm gonna be marinating on all yeah, that information everything and, she uh, said yeah, it was everything good. she good said information. shout out to our special guest yeah that we had on our show today yeah absolutely awesome phenomenal one more again you get the bell now you know this is crazy we gonna gave her five bells we gave her five bells okay <laughs> i well, believe we gave her five bells she deserved it anyway. she deserved them all <laughs> all right, all right. So, but all right. So we're, we're gonna, gonna take, take a break, break. and when we, we come, come back, back, it's gonna be time for news and sports. The Scholars Professional Editing Firm consists of specialized group of academic doctors, editors, and statisticians that keep doctoral candidates moving through the academic doctoral process by providing one-to-one group mentorship and all-inclusive editorial service that produce writing advancement that result in exponential movement. The scholars conduct line-by-line editing, proof, and copy editing, university-specific format compliance, and substantive done-for-you services on the following documents. Doctoral thesis, dissertation, capstone projects, research studies, research proposals, research papers, and oral defense preparation and presentations. The Scholars Professional Editing Group keep you moving. But for more information on editorial service our doc, or our doctoral accelerated mentorship program, visit www.thescholarsediting.com, www.thescholarsediting.com, or contact Dr. Hayes at 281-315-6053. Everyone in the world has gone to bed one night or another with fear or pain or loss or disappointment. And yet each of us has awakened, arisen, uh, somehow made our ablution, seen other human beings, and said, Morning, how are you? Find things in you. It's amazing. Wherever that abides in the human being, there is the nobleness of the human spirit. Despite it all, black and white. Asian, Spanish, Native American, pretty, plain, thin, fat, vowed a celibate, 
we rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll arise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Just cause I walk as if I have oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like suns and like moons with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken? Bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries. Does my sassiness upset you? <laughs> Don't take it so hard just because I laugh. <laughs> As if I have gold mines digging in my own backyard. You can shoot me with your words. You can cut me with your lies. You can kill me with your hatefulness. But just like life, I rise. Does my sexiness offend you? Oh. Does it come as a surprise that I dance as if I have diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past rooted in pain, I rise. A black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise into a daybreak miraculously clear, I rise, bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the hope and the dream of the slave. And so, naturally, there I go rising. All right. All right, All right. Maya Angelou. Yes. And still I rise. Still I rise. And still I rise. Yes, I remember that poem. Yeah. I was a little girl. I remember yeah. that. that was yes. Powerful. That was yes. Powerful. All, All right. right. So it's time for. It's the County Nikki Show on iHeartRadio. It's time for. News and sports. All right. It's sports. <laughs> All right. So the NBA trade deadline. The 76ers acquired Tobias Harris from the Clippers for several players and picks. The days leading up to the NBA trade deadline are no time for sleep as the Los Angeles Clippers and Philadelphia 76ers have proven. Just a few hours into Wednesday morning on the East Coast, the two teams made a big trade that was sent Tobias Harris to the 76ers. Now, here's what happened. The full deal sees Harris, Bobin Marjanovic, and Mike Scott headed to the Philadelphia 76ers with the Clippers acquiring Landry Shamet, Sh mm -hmm. Mike Muscala, Wilson Chandler, and a handful of picks. So they'll get the Sixers 2020 first round pick as well as the Miami Heat's highly coveted unprotected 2021 first round pick, which the Sixers obtained at the draft last summer. So in addition, the Clippers will get the Sixers 2021 and 2023 second round picks. This is a trade that will have huge ramifications around the league, both this season and moving forward. And for, for uh, first of all, it gives the 76ers yet another high level player. Harris is in the midst of a career year, putting up 20.7 points and 7.9 rebounds per game while shooting over 42 percent from downtown. Many felt he had a legitimate case to make the All-Star team for the first time in his careers. And what sources on ESPN are saying is that this team, the 76ers' new acquired team, is arguably the best starting five in basketball. And that's including the Warriors. Nice. All right. So in other news, uh, we have Marquette versus Villanova. The Golden Eagles hand Nova its first Big East loss of the season, and um, I watched this game. It was a it was a phenomenal game. Um, Marquette led most of the game. Villanova had a late game rally in the second half, took the lead by one. Uh, at one point, Marquette was up by 15 points, and Nova fought back, and it went down to the wire, and. Uh, 
Nova could not pull it off, but it was it was it was a phenomenal game. Uh, but it was Marquez' offense, okay, namely Howard's offense, that put them in a position to steal a close win in the first place. Howard scored thirty eight points on thirteen of twenty four shooting in the win. He and Junior Sakar Anim accounted for the team's final twenty six points, which spanned sixteen minutes and thirty seconds of the game time. It's Howard's six thirty point plus. Game, uh, point game of the season, uh, season and third uh, and four games. And so it was a great game, man. And then, last but not least, I watched uh, Utah play UCLA. Mm -hmm. UCLA has Utah on the ropes the whole entire game. At one point, they were down 20. But Parker Van Dyke sunk a deep three-pointer at the clock <coughs> expired to lead Utah past UCLA 93 to 92 in a Pac game game on Saturday afternoon at Pauley Pavilion presented by Westcom.com. Wow. It was great. I mean, I, I watched though, I watched the UCLA game, mm -hmm. Utah game, mm -hmm. and you just saw the Utah team down 20. They were just chipping away, mm -hmm. chipping away. Mm -hmm. Let's chip away. Let's score real mm -hmm. fast. Let's press, hitting big shots. And it seemed to me that they had, of course, UCLA on the ropes. They were just trying to outlast them with their lead mm -hmm. that was getting chipped away. There and and and, and uh, Parker Van Dyke comes down. I mean, it, it, you know, in, it, with the last possession, mm -hmm. hits mm -hmm. a deep three. I stood wow. up and started jumping. He hit it at the buzzer. He hit it at the buzzer. He hit it at the buzzer. It was it was good. <laughs> so listen, beware the eyes of March Madness. It is drawing near. It is February. But March Madness is around the corner. Nice. It's just the beginning. Yeah, I always get my bracket wrong, though. It, it always get messed up the first game. Yeah, I, the first I round. always mess up my it's always, bracket. It's always an upset you know, the first round. Every time I turn around, my stuff is all wrong. Yeah, I yeah. have to get a tutor. You gotta get to win. You, you're not alone. Too. You're not alone yeah. because uh, I mean, every year, you know, what's what's happening is these smaller teams are getting big time players. Mm -hmm. And now it used to be a time years ago where those 16 brackets were just happy to be, to make it to the tournament yeah. and play against a number one seed. Yeah. But now these 16 seeds believe they can go in and win yeah. and beat these top seeds. So that's what's happening. And then, and you're starting to get upset. You yeah. get upset. Yeah. The like, upset is me messing up my bracket. <laughs> and, and then you, and then you upset about it. After yes. Yeah. That's what's up. Yes. Yeah. All right. That's some good stuff. That's so hopefully, prayerfully, you know, I'll find a tutor and I'll get my bracket right this year. We'll uh, see what happens. We'll see. we'll see what happens. I'm I'm taking application. We'll see. <laughs> nah. Well, in news, you know, sad news. Um, young and the rest of the star, Christoph St. John has gone home. Christoph passed away last week at the age of 52. And um is sad because he was recently in, he recently got engaged and he was soon to be married to his third wife before he suddenly passed away and she's just distraught. Yeah. She don't know what's going on. Um his body was discovered by one of his friends who stopped by his home just to check on him. And it says that Christoph, you know, he was dealing with some personal issues. He lost his son. He lost his son Julian and he could not cope. Mm -hmm. with his son's um death and it says that you know at from his son's death he had to receive like mental health treatments to help him cope with that and it recently came upon three years of his son's anniversary mm -hmm. and so Christoph he had to be hospitalized and placed under 72 hour psychiatric evaluation because he threatened to um kill his dog. Mm -hmm. Now, Christoph, he was nominated nine for nine daytime Emmy Awards for his role as Neil Winters on The Young and the Restless and his and Shamar Moore. I remember this. I remember seeing it. Shamar Moore played his brother. And I remember that because um I used to be heavy into it. And I remember Christoph, he played the doctor. Mm -hmm. And Shamar Moore was his brother. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I cannot remember the actress name who played his wife. Um she had gotten sick and she come up with a fever and Christoph was like, okay, he gave us some medication that will help her sleep. He went to work and in comes Shamar Moore, mm -hmm. messed around on the girl's sick bed, slept with her mm -hmm. because he was in love with her. I, I remember that. That was huge on the young and the rest of us. I remember that story. I remember that story. You lose the focus. No, no, I'm just telling <laughs> 
I'm just telling my story. I remember. I remember this character. I, I remember. I, got, I, got, I can okay, tell you know by the way you explain it. Uh, you know what? <laughs> see how he see how he do, y'all. See how he do. See how he do. Okay. Now he also received um he also was in Generations and he received two nominations for his role when he was Young, he was also in Roots, the miniseries. He was also in Bad News Bears and The Next Generation. He also worked on The Cosby Show. Remember that? Yeah. He worked on A Different World, and he also worked on Laverne mm-hmm. and Shirley. Yeah. And um, they're saying that he's going to be buried next to his beloved son, Julian St. John, at Valley Oaks Memorial Park in Westlake Village. Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah. uh, very, 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 yeah. very sad. You know, very sad, man. Yeah. Very you know, it's sad. one of them things where, you know, life life doesn't stop being life. You yeah. know, because you're, you know, because you know you're a celebrity or well known and or famous actor or athlete or rapper or you know whatever. It's like life doesn't stop being life. Like we still have to, you know, battle and, yeah. and deal with the issues of life, uh, loss. You know, trauma. And he had a broken heart. Yeah, absolutely. he had he had a broken heart. Yeah. He had a broken heart. He loved his son. He had yeah. a broken heart. You know, and he had he was having problems dealing right. with the which is, fact which is, that which his son, understandable. you know, yeah. is not here. And that's and that's understandable. Yeah. It's understandable. He loved his son, and you know, they said that he said a, a, a parent should not have to bury their children. Yeah. It should be the other way around. Right. You know. Well, in other news, I mean, I'm not to leave off of that. Yeah. So, so our thoughts and prayers. You know, our thoughts and prayers go out to the families. Yeah, family yeah. and and the um and the uh you know. Fiance, yeah. you know, she's they said she's she's still trying to figure out what is going on, right. you know. So, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with the family. But going from sad news to even sadder news, Liam Neeson, you know, an actor who whom I admired, mm-hmm. he sits down with one of his friends and, you know, she tells him about a time when she was raped by a person of color. Liam Neeson, he gets so upset that he goes on a rampage. And he goes and he tries to seek out a, a person of color just to shoot and kill them. Mm-hmm. You know, any anybody. Mm-hmm. He says he 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 said on Good Morning America that um he was so angry he drove for hours. He went over to a pub so that he can be approached by a, a person of color and so that he can have so he can shoot and kill them. Mm-hmm. What kind of crap is that? Yeah, it's just what kind of crap is that? And I'm gonna tell you, his he had a a, a movie um premiere coming out. They canceled that. Yeah, they canceled that. So he had to have like a little party for it at his house. But they canceled that movie premiere because of what has happened. And not only that, but Spike Lee said that he will not cast him in any of his films I because because of it. Right. Because of it. And then we got Prada and Gucci. Prada it Prada comes out with this little chain that hangs on the purse of a black person with big red lips. Mm-hmm. And then Gucci comes out with this sweater that goes all the way up to the nose and the mouthpiece is red. Right, right. The the sweater is black, mouthpiece is red. Right. So it, it's like then you want to issue an apology. Right. It's all the apology is always after the fact. And my my thing is in such a racially sensitive time, why would you even create something like that? Yeah, why, like, why would you I, do that? I would like to believe that they wouldn't know going into, you know, this, you know, this thing that there's going to be some backlash. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to figure. And and someone said it so perfectly. Who who where is your PR people? Right. That tell you, hey, 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 don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Don't do that. You you we can't put this out like that. Right. We gotta do something different. Where where's your PR people? You know, that you're supposed to run things by before you come out with stuff. Right. Like, are you listening to them? Right, right, right. Or are you ignoring them because you you know you're the top? Right. You know, I, I just don't um I just I just don't get it. Right. Now you want to apologize. And so TI is leading the the X on no more Prada, no more Gucci. Mm-hmm. He's like, we got to we're going to stop wearing it. Right, we're going right. to stop buying it. So TI is leading that. I got you. He's leading the band. I got you. And you know them rappers, not rappers, but you know artists, period, entertainers, you know they love their their yeah, you yeah, know their Gucci. labels. Yeah. Gucci? Yeah. Love Gucci. Yeah. Prada? Yeah. You know, so no more. Got you. 
No more. All right. So um, <laughs> that was that was a lot. That was a lot to take in. Uh, yes, it was. That kind of brought me down from Ooh, my sports news. I, I see, because you over here like, uh-huh. yeah. So <laughs> well, you know, we'll probably have some. Hey, we'll probably have some happy news. Happy news um, mm-hmm. next week. Okay. We'll okay. see what happens. We'll see what happens. There's a lot going on, though. There's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. Anyway, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, it's going to be my favorite part of the show. We're going to find out what's bothering Nikki. just to win an election. And I know you didn't do it for me. You did it because you understand the enormity of the task that lies ahead. But my main message is, is uh, to the parents of uh, Trayvon Martin. Uh, you know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. 
They had their entire lives ahead of them. Birthdays, graduations, weddings, kids of their own. Among the fallen were also teachers, men and women who devoted their lives to helping our children fulfill their dreams. So our hearts are broken today. It's the idea held by generations of citizens who believe that America is a constant work in progress, who believe that loving this country requires, requires more than singing its praises or avoiding uncomfortable truths. It requires the occasional disruption, the willingness to speak out for what is right, to shake up the status quo. That's America. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Facts, evidence, reason, logic, an understanding of science, these are good things. These are qualities you want in people making policy. Black, white, Latino, Asian, Native American, young, old, gay, straight, men, women, folks with disabilities, all pledging allegiance under the same proud flag to this big, bold country that we love. That's what I see. That's the America I know. I do have one final ask of you as your president. The same thing I asked when you took a chance on me eight years ago. I'm asking you to believe, not in my ability to bring about change, but in yours. Yes, we can. Yes, we did. Yes, we can. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Yes. I hear yes. you. I hear yes. you, man. Yes. I hear you. Yes. Nick, Nick over here. She over here, um, you know, giving us these inserts, man, in honor Black History Month. Yeah, uh, de definitely, definitely a phenomenal, and uh, you know, hey, yeah, awesome stuff. That's awesome. Good job, man. A great right. president, and I'm able to see it in yeah. my lifetime. Yeah, awesome, That's awesome. Right. All right, all right. So we're gonna keep the train moving. Choo -choo. Keep it choo -choo. Choo -choo. It's the Kevin and Nikki Show on iHeartRadio. We on iHeartRadio and all around the world. And <laughs> now it's time for my favorite part of the show. It's time to find out what's bothering Nikki. What's bothering you, Nikki? I'm just going to jump right into it. Parents, what are we teaching our children? Mm -hmm. What are we teaching our children? We cannot send our children to school and expect the teacher to teach them everything that we're supposed to be teaching them. Mm -hmm. It starts at home. Mm -hmm. It starts at home. You don't want your kids to be cussing. Stop letting them listen to music that got cussing in it. Right. You don't want your kids to be going to school acting crazy. Stop letting them watch crazy things on TV. It starts at home. It starts at home. Yep. It starts with you. When they get to school, they should be well taught. The teacher's responsibility is to teach them reading, writing, and arithmetic and some gym. That's it. Okay? That's it. The responsibility of the teacher is not to do your job. That's right. It is, it is not to do your job. You are the parent. Mm -hmm. You have to take some responsibility about training up. The Bible says train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart. But we are teaching our children the wrong thing. So when they grow up, they are, they're bullies. You know, they're bullies. They, they, they become grown up bullies because we didn't teach them how not to be a bully at home. Right, right, right. Do you understand that part of the, part of the whole bullying system starts with your child? Right. And if you teach your child, hey, baby, that's not right. Don't do this. Don't do that. And the third, they wouldn't go to school and be beating up the kids in school and then turn and grow up to be even bigger bullies. Well, some of the parents is bullies. So that's, that's where they're getting it from. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> You know? So you didn't learn nothing. So now you're not teaching your child anything. 
This cycle has got to end somewhere. Parents, it needs to start with you. You can't be, you know, saying that your child, oh, my son is a good son. And he all this, the whole time, he got the butcher knife behind his back and ready to hack up somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, remember that commercial we were talking about with uh, Jason's mother? <laughs> Right, 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 right. Yeah, picture of Jason from Friday the 13th. His mom yes. was hugging him. He got the butcher knife in his hand. Like, not my And the captain said, not my baby. You know what I'm saying? Come on. We got to do better. We have to do better with our children. Our children are modeling after us. And if we're not taking the time to sit down with them, teach them how to read, to helping them with their homework, they're growing up to be Menace to society. Mm-hmm. And now, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, you better train them, parents. You better teach your children something or the court system is going to teach them. And then you're going to have an even bigger problem. You're right. going to have an even bigger problem. And you do not want the court system to teach your child anything because I'm telling you right now, they don't care about your kids. They sure don't. They do not care about your kids. That's right. They will stick your. They will take your child from you and stick your kid anywhere just to have just to get them out of their face. Yeah, yeah. So listen, we got to take back our children. I saw um, a post on Facebook, and there was this young man. He had tattoos all on his face. Mm-hmm. He had three children. The other two, I would say the, the older son looked like maybe like six or seven. Mm-hmm. Then he had a younger daughter. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give her, I'm gonna give her maybe five. Then he had a little infant baby. I'll I'll say that the little infant baby may look like well, one. Mm-hmm. Okay, because she didn't look like she can talk just yet. And in all of the hands of these kids are guns. And he's saying. Man, you got to teach them now, man, how to protect themselves, man. I'm Mm -hmm. like, come on. See, this is the problem right here. Everybody, you know, putting up their post. DHS, where's DHS? Who? Where's the who? Somebody need to call DHS and show them this video. Okay. And then what? Right. And then what? Yeah, that's probably not going to solve the problem. Yeah. The problem starts with him. Yeah. The problem is him. The father. And the mother who's holding the phone tape recording it. Mm-hmm. So the mother's, it, I'm not going to say, allegedly the mother is holding the phone recording it. So, uh, and felt as though it was okay enough to put that up on Facebook. Mm-hmm. What did you think you were going to get some good comments off right. of it? Come on. Yeah, and you know what's, what's scary is the mindset. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the, the mindset such that I'm going to record this and put it on Facebook because I don't see nothing wrong with it. Right. That's even more scarier than what he's, what he, what's being said to the child. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? The fact that these adults, these, these uh, people who are supposed to be, you know, mentors, they don't see anything wrong with, with this. You know, and it's, it's just ho- sad. It's horrible. It's, just it's, sad. it's sad. It's sad. Yeah, it really is Parents, sad. Parents, we got to do better. What are, so the title of What's Bothering Nikki, if I can give it a title. Parents, what are we tre- teaching our children? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are we teaching our children? Yeah. That's it. That's all I got. We got to do better. Yeah. Got to do better. You know, and the thing about it, um, what I've learned in, in my life is you can't give to somebody else what you don't have. Yeah. And... There's a lot of lacking in parenting skills in this day and age. You know what I mean? We're, we're dealing with a different time, different generation. Um, and I remember as I was getting older, you know, we went through this phase where parents were going up to the school and defending their kids when the teacher was trying to tell them, stop swinging from the chandeliers on your cell phone. And what I begin to see is that Anytime you defend a child when they're wrong or not doing the right thing, Mm -hmm. you reinforce that behavior. Mm -hmm. And a child begins to say, oh, you mean I could swing from the chandeliers uh, or the lights in my class, talk on my cell phone and cuss the teacher out. And my mom and dad is going to come here and defend me. So you think they're going to stop or change that behavior? No. And so that's kind of what we see. And now we're seeing... Um, 
negative behavior continuously being reinforced and yeah. it's just sad. Yeah, and, and it is it really is sad. It really is sad. So, you know, that's that's what I got. That's what I got. You know, that's the title. Parents, what are we teaching our our uh mm-hmm. children? I got you. That's good stuff, Nick. That's good stuff. I mean, it, it, it brings us back to the household, the home. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. um yeah, what are we teaching our children? Yeah, we don't sit down and eat with our children no more. Yeah, that generation is. You home. know, that yeah. we don't sit at the table. Now it's As just a family. we don't cook. Right. We don't cook. Right. You know, good a good home cooked meal. Home cooked meal is McDonald's. Yeah. You know, not saying there's anything wrong with McDonald's. I like the nuggets myself. But um that's that's not a, a home cooked meal for mm-hmm. our children. Right. You know, we gotta do better. We gotta do better. I got you. That's it. That's all I got. Yeah. That's all I got. Okay. So we're going to take a break. And when we come back, it's going to be time for my favorite part of the show. Kevin's Corner. Yeah. When I get chills at night, I feel it deep inside without you. Yeah. To the Kevin and Nikki show on iHeartRadio, and so many more. All right, I love that. Yeah, I love me. 
I love myself, so I don't need anybody else. I love me. I love myself, and I don't need anybody else. I love Scream me. my own name. I love I like that. that. I like that. Listen, we're going to be playing some uplifting music. I love it. Music. You, got, you know, it's, it, listen. We, I love that. We, yeah, you got to love yes. yourself, man. You got to love, love yourself. You, love you. Listen, we talked about that last week. Yeah. If nobody tells you you're pretty, nobody says anything. Like Kev said, you re- take your left hand, put it over your shoulder, pat yourself on the back, and yeah. tell yourself. That's right. Encourage yourself. Yeah. You got to love yourself. Love man. yourself. You love love yourself. yourself. Stop waiting for people to validate you. You validate yourself. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, love yeah, it. Man. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Okay. I'm ready. You ready? Right. You I'm, ready? You ready? I'm, I'm you ready? Always, I'm always ready to go. All you know, right. You know, so you know now that. it's time. For my favorite part of the show, Kevin's Corner. All right. So, listen, we're going to be moving into just some practical steps that we can use to apply to our lives so that we can start to change our thinking. Because so whatever man think of in his heart, so is he or so is his or her behavior. So if you want to change the behavior, you got to start with changing the thinking process. And so you heard the song. It was about loving yourself. Yes. You have to love yourself. And part of loving yourself is uh, thinking highly of yourself, not in the sense of arrogance, not in the sense of pride, but in the sense of having good, positive, healthy self Work. Mm-hmm. And that's what mm-hmm. we're dealing with. We're going to deal with raising our self work, but we got to change the thinking. Yes, we do. And um, sometime on Kevin's Corner, I talked about the 2190 rule. Well, some, it takes 21 days to, uh, you know, change a habit. Yeah. So, hey, I want everybody to take this self worth lifting challenge for the next 21 days. I want, uh, I got some principles that I want all of us to try to apply so that we can start thinking differently about ourselves. All right. Nice. But just to recap, all right, there is, we, we're dealing with insecurities. That's what we've been dealing with. Insecurities um, and how we can change our insecurities about ourselves. Mm-hmm. And every he- human being is insecure about something because we live in an imperfect falling world. We're not perfect. We're falling. And we've all been hurt mm-hmm. by something or someone in our lifetime. Um, and with that said, it can build, you know, uh, insecurities. We just want to help us stay out of the unhealthy realm of insecurities and in that healthy realm, uh, if you will, and deal with those. All right. But there is an internal dialogue that accompanies our feelings of insecurity. This is called the critical inner voice. OK, the critical inner voice is formed out of painful early life experiences in which we witness or experience hurtful attitudes towards us or those close to us. And as we grew up, we unconsciously adopt and integrated this pattern of destructive thoughts towards ourselves and then others. So we try to change our thinking towards ourselves and watch what happened. Our thinking towards others going to get better because Mm -hmm. we project onto others out of the foundation of who we are. So, you know, you have a healthy, a healthy self worth and self value because you see other people in, in positive lights in healthy ways as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what events or attitudes shape this inner critic? The experiences we have had early in life can be at the root of our insecurities as adults. So the big question is, you know, we always been told what we should do and rarely do people help us or tell us how we should do it. I right. mean, that's the arguments right. of kids and teenagers. You right. tell me what to do, but tell me how to do it. So I'm just right. going, not that I know it all, not that I have it all, uh, but I'm just going to just give uh, one principle a week that we can apply to our lives to begin the process of changing our thinking the and or insecurity. So how can I overcome insecurity? Uh, so once we have a better sense of where our insecurities comes from, and the profound influence it is having on our lives, we can begin to challenge it, all right? So then once we know where it comes up, we can start by interrupting the critical inner voice process, all right? So the first step, what I want to do is, um, first step we have to do, and this takes courage. This takes courage because we cannot conquer what we don't confront. Mm -hmm. You cannot Admit what you don't acknowledge. Mm-hmm. So 
the first thing we want to think about, and maybe you can keep a journal, you can write it down on a piece of paper or whatever. It, you know, the inner crit- critical voice is fueled by painful experiences. What painful, you need to maybe take some time to think about this. I would encourage you to write it down because we're able to, we're able to glean more from um, what we're trying to accomplish the more you reinforce it through your senses, whether it's seeing it, writing it down, hearing it, vocalizing it, and we're going to get to the vocalizing it later. But the first thing we need to do is write down on a piece of paper, what was the painful experience that made you feel about yourself that you were not pretty? Oh, wow. What made you... What experience was it a teacher in third grade that made you that told you you wasn't pretty? What was the experience that made you feel that you wasn't smart enough, mm. that you wasn't handsome enough, that you wasn't good enough? There, there these these negative critical voices can be traced back to yeah. an experience. Mm-hmm. Maybe it could have been something that an uncle said, an aunt, maybe perhaps a mom or a dad or a teacher or a coach. Maybe it was maybe it was the, the kid that was bullying people in school that told you you were fat and you'll never be pretty. And now you done slimmed down and you 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 know you got the hourglass feeling, but your mind is still stuck yeah. uh, at that when he called you fat yeah. and you'll never be pretty. Yeah. So we're trying to rearrange that so that we can walk in our healthy worth and positive self-value about our thinking. Yeah. So just think about that. Trace it. Try to go back. And it, it, it's going to take some That's courage good. because you have to acknowledge it. Yeah. And it, it may shed, cause you to shed some tears. It may cause you to get frustrated. It may cause you to become angry. But if you just hang on in there with me, I'm telling you, we're going to get to the mountaintop on this Love thing. It. And our perspective is going to change. But now what we're trying to do is we're trying to dig up that fallow ground. Mm-hmm. We're trying to dig up mm-hmm. them old exp- uh, mm-hmm. past for experience because because we about to bury them and put the flower on top, I put the tombstone that. on top, and we that. not revisit it again. Or when that thought tries to revisit you, we go. I'm gonna give you some principles and some ammunition to say, I, I, you're not coming in here. Uh-huh. Just like life, life. Tell it you're by. not. You're not coming in. That's you're not right. coming in here no more. That's because right. Because because enough is enough of walking around thinking and feeling and behaving. Like you're not good enough, like you're not smart, like you're not intelligent, like you're not handsome, like you like you can't do it, like you're not pretty. The buck stops here. Mm. So our homework assignment for this week is to go think about those experiences when that teacher, that coach mm. told you you wasn't strong enough, you wasn't good enough. And hey, I've done this. It's worked for me, man. Nice. And I'm telling you, it'll work for you nice. too. Love it. Yeah. That's I awesome. Like I love it. You gotta, you I gotta, love you gotta, you gotta, I love it. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta confront it in order to conquer it. Yes, you do. You gotta, you gotta, and every week we're gonna have small homework assignments that's gonna change our love it. thinking. Love it. Love it. I'm love ready, it. man. I'm love ready, it. man. I'm ready. I'm ready for it. <laughs> yeah. I'm here for it, honey. Yeah, yeah. I'm here for it, sugar. I'm yeah. ready. Yes. All yeah. right. All yeah. right. And just keep in mind that when we revisit these feelings, we're, we're revisiting these experiences and, and it, just to acknowledge it, but we're not receiving it mm-hmm. because this this is not who you were. Yeah. You're not what they said you yeah. are. Yeah, we're writing it down just so we can confront it. We can acknowledge what they said at the root of how it hurt us nice. and how it I shaped our it. thinking. So I'm ready to go, man. It's All gonna right. be it's gonna be good. All right, gonna, we we just helping we just helping ourselves nice. and helping people, man. That's I, it. I, I'm going to start on mine uh, look, after the show. I, is I already started on mine. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's All it. right. All right. That's it. I matter of fact, I shared some of mine last week on the show mm. when I was talking about how my coach was telling yeah. me, you're yeah, not yeah, good yeah, enough, yeah, you're not yeah, fast yeah. enough, yeah. you're not strong enough, you can't jump high enough. I'm like, nope. Yeah. I dropped 30 on you right now if you, you want. You better stop it. You see, you I see how my thinking has changed. Five to the five. Five to the five. You see how my thinking has changed? You get the bell. <laughs> See, look, that was a prime example right there. Yes. I, didn't, I didn't plan that coming out of my yes. mouth. There but my thinking go. has changed go, about I, what I, was said to me, yes. about what hurt me, and I lace them up right now yes. at my age and still drop 30 on you. You know what Yeah, I'm I'll get mine next week because I got to go sit and think about it. I got you. That's I got, right. Yeah. There you go. Love it, love it, yeah, love it. Yeah, we all got homework to do. All right. I'm going to do my homework all right. tonight. All right. All right. That's what's up. Put it out there. All right. Look, I'm excited, man. So I'm after Kevin D. Vince. You can follow me <laughs> on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter at Kevin D. Benton and check Nick and I out on on YouTube. Yes. We got trailers up there. We uploading clips, audition videos, all that stuff. Check us out and hey, let us know what you think, man. And follow our acting journey. We are actor K 
Kevin D. Benton on YouTube and actress Nikki Warren. Check us yes, out. Yes, check us out. I'm actress Nikki Warren, as Kev said, on Facebook, on Twitter, um, at Nikki. <laughs> At the Kev Nikki Show. <laughs> on Twitter, at Nikki Ward. And on the gram, hello, I'm Nikki. That's spelled H E L L O I M N I K E E. You can find our show on Facebook, Kevin Nikki Show. On Twitter, give at, it Kev. At Kev at Nick, Kevin, Kevin Nikki, Nikki Show. At yeah. Kevin Nikki Show. <laughs> Kevin, and Nikki and show. we're coming to the gram. We're coming to the gram. Soon, yeah, real soon. Very, very, very soon. We're yeah. going to have a whole bunch of stuff up there. Uh, videos, videos our shows, stuff. pictures. Yep, we're going to have a whole bunch up there. Up there. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns regarding our show, email us to Kevin and Nikki Show at Yahoo.com. You got any questions for our special guests? Sharon Pack Withers. Send us an email. We will we'll read it to her, get the answer, and read it back. And like we say every week, who knows? Your yes. email can be featured, featured on, on our, our show. show. Yes, like Kev said, go to our YouTube channels, check us out. We got stuff up there. Also, go to Amazon Prime. Check out the, the Covington witches. witches. The witches are in the building. Yeah, and and leave us leave us a um leave us a comment. And let you know what. Let us know what you think about season one, episode one, season two, episode two. We're going into taping for that, and we will have that up there. Yeah, I gotta leave a review. Yeah. yeah, we will have that up there, and plus, Kevin and I got some awesome stuff going on, yes, and huh? that's coming to Prime as well. Speaking yeah. that into existence yeah, yeah. right now, that's coming to Prime. So listen, stay up with us, go through our journey with us, you know, and you know, shout us out. Yeah. We love to hear from you. Yeah. Love to hear from you. That's it. That's it. That's all I got. All right. you got more? All right, now I'm, I'm like I'm after all the bad news. I'm back on the high. <laughs> I'm back on the high with this kind of back on the high. You know, rearranging of our thinking, yes. and our, the thinking challenge, and yes. we, we get rid of this critical. Voice. We get rid. Listen, yeah. it got to go. It got to go. If we've been dragging that around for too long, all our lives, gotta go. you know what I mean? Got to go. We yeah. gotta go. Gotta go. That's it. Well, all right. So okay. with the Kevin and Nikki show on iHeartRadio, we are everywhere, and we are out of here. here. Peace.
have been listening to the Kevin and Nikki Show on iHeartRadio.